Disco was a kind of dirty word, wasn't it? Totally, totally yes. dirty word. And I remember being, that must have been 14, 15, having to hide my Blondie records, having to hide the 12-inch of Funky Town, having to hide all these kind of disco records. Yeah. My, my mates came round yes. in case they discovered I was listening to disco. Now, of course, when I loved Blondie, I would just call it pop. Yeah. Whether, exactly. it was, whether it had the rhythms or not, or whether, yes. whatever it was absorbing, it was pop. You knew it was kind of disco, but it was still kind of new wave. There's something new wave about it. Because yes. you know? by then, I think Saturday Night Fever came out, and then the bandwagon jumpers came, and it, it was a lot of disco dross. Yeah, um, but this didn't sound like dross. And what, did, what was your reading of disco at that time, then, in the late 70s? What, 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 what did well, you think of it? Because you'd, you'd pretty much come through punk, hadn't you? Yeah, I came through punk. I mean, before punk, I was listening to early disco as a school, you know, schoolboy. George McRae, um, Rock Your Baby, right, yeah, yeah. Um, Donna Summer, it, mainly the well-known stuff. And my mum used to listen to James Brown, so I, I had a background of that, as well as a lot of crap pop as well, you know. Yeah, I wasn't just yeah. listening to soul and disco. When I got into punk, you had to hide it. And I think what helped, you know, helped me suddenly make a stand and say I like this was um, the Z label. Yes. Which was actually too clever for most disco people. Most of the stuff they just mm. wouldn't touch with a barge pole, mm. serious disco heads. And it, was, it had a new wave sensibility in the lyrics and in, in just the, the attitude, the way it's made. And then you had suddenly Death Disco by Public Image. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And all the, all the punk disco stuff. Yeah. And suddenly it was all right to dance, you know. What was it about Z that, because I didn't think of it as disco, you see, again, I exactly. just thought of it yeah, as, yeah. as the new thing and it, was, yeah. it, it, had, it had intelligence about it, it was slightly surreal, it was crazed. So yeah. I didn't think about it, about the fact that actually you could dance to it, and to an extent I didn't dance to it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a whole area about that early, uh, early 80s, late 70s that I think we were very at the same place where Grace Jones has sort of made that move across from real sort of hardcore, what we think of a Gate Studio disco. 54 disco, yeah. to something that was a little bit more self-conscious, you yeah. was doing Joy Division. Yeah, but, uh, you know, normal. Yeah, yeah, they were doing a catalogue of things. The main people who were keeping it alive were the gay people in San Francisco, so mm -hmm. it kind of evolved into a faster, harder, more electronic thing with Patrick Cowley, high energy. It got high energy it, but it got disco. called something else, it had to be called something else. Yeah, it? it had to be called, yeah. I mean, they checked the, the disco chart, got named the dance chart in mm -hmm. America. In the later and Billboard, chart. Yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. And then, um, yeah, it was all this kind of electronic stuff. And then the people who carried on with a passion making disco were the Europeans, so yes. hence you had Italo disco. Um, and that was based on new wave stuff. All that Italo disco was based on Depeche Mode and, and people like that. It was a weird crossing over. Yeah, it? It's it, a weird the melody. way that we often think of craft work as being a key, key ingredient. Yeah. There was other ingredients as well where. Yeah. What we call what became dance music of sort, and then sort of how started to use the European electronic music as part of its ingredients, didn't it? Yes, exactly. And that's the thing about house music. When house music came along, um, they were playing Italo, and they also remembered all that old soul stuff and, f and disco stuff. And so, you know, the first big hits like um, Farley Jack Master Funk, Love Can't Turn Around, that was based on Isaac Hayes, I Can't Turn Around. And then you had Jack Your Body, which got to number one, I think, was it 86, 87? That was the bass line mm. from First Choice, mm. Let the Man Put Asunder, mm. dis disco record, yeah, you know? Yeah. And that was disco, just done really primitively by people in their bedrooms with cheap equipment. Mm. It was the new disco. Yes. Now, what, what, what the original sensibility of disco, if you think about it in a hardcore sense, the fact that it was a way for, for you know, especially in America, the traditional sort of minorities to find a way to express themselves, you know, the gays, the blacks, mm. you know, they were finding their own form of music away from the mainstream that was dominated by the rock sensibility. That, that's, that sensibility is kind of interesting because every time disco in another guise makes a comeback, it, it still seems to be reflecting and representing those same urges in a way for, yeah. for a, a, an exiled outsider community yeah. to find their own place. Yeah, I think I think that will always carry on. I mean, people, will, you know, especially in in the, the gay community, will want to go somewhere to meet other people, same as them, and dance and mm. express their sexuality. Disco will never die. It never has died. It's just changed it's the just, name. It just changed yeah, the name, absolutely. Exactly. Because it got such a horrendous <laughs> reputation. Yeah. Now, what I'm interested in is that moment. I don't know when it would be. There was a moment when we went different ways as as listeners yeah. because you stayed with it much more. I don't know if that, yeah. I mean, because you went out and you danced, I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is. I mean, maybe there's a very <laughs> simple answer. But you, you, coming in it 
thinking that disco was a dirty word, yeah. I, I, I somehow, maybe because I'm a rock critic, I never shut that off uh -huh. somehow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even though I was always listening because there was increasingly the more interesting sounds were coming from the dance world, were coming from that world because it was mm. more experimental than rock, which was getting more and more narrow in its sort of sonic, you know, it was just influenced by itself, so it was always getting narrow, whereas dance was always using hybrids, it was always looking for different ways to keep the excitement going. Yeah. And you maintained an interest in, in it, you know, uh, so you moved on from, from that early 80s moment, the Billy Club, the, the mm. Strange, Steve Strange moment, and, and, and basically it became what you were completely interested in. That was purely because of, of my fascination for electronic music, you know. Um, but I share that, you see. I adore electronic music, you know, that whole, you know, I love that story of you buying being boiled by the Human League because you thought it was the soundtrack to the John Carpenter sort of... Yeah, uh, which, uh, which the thought of music there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I understand that, you know, yeah. because in a way it's a craving for new <laughs> yeah. sounds, isn't it? Yes. But your craving for it also seemed to be connected to the fact that you could dance to it, you know? Yeah, I think, um, you see, I guess like you, I always went to gigs and that's all I did for a, a couple of years. And then I went to Steve Strange's club at Bi uh, Billy's yeah. and they were playing craft work and they were playing their new stuff which hadn't come out yet, Visage and, and things like that. Uh, a lot of David Bowie, a lot of Roxy Music. And now and again they'd throw in the, a couple of disco things and you'd be like, oh, hang on a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but then it, it seemed perfectly normal after that. And then yeah. you'd meet more um, people who are like, oh, you should come to this club. So you'd go to some of the gay clubs and it was pure disco. Um, obviously this was in the later years. This is after disco died. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just getting the tail end of the, mm. the, the remains of the fallout of disco sucks. But yeah, you're, you're dancing with disco and, and the high energy stuff. And um, you're seeing these videos of a mandolier with a big whip singing, you know, give mm. a bit of mmm to me, you know, give a bit of mmm to you. And then you get kind of fascinated by this whole gay uh, subculture and stuff. But it was mainly the electronic stuff. And to me, listening to the normal and the human league and their stuff was danceable, all those Martin, Martin Russian remixes, fantastic, you know. Yeah. And then the Italo stuff coming out, so I'd be following that. Um, which was obviously based on all that. Uh, and then things like Bobby O, which I still can't figure this out, mm. but who ripped who off? I yeah. know Bobby O ripped off Blue Monday for a Divine record, and it sounded yeah. identical. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure New Order ripped off Bobby O yeah. for Blue Monday. So. Absolutely. Because <laughs> I remember yeah. Neil Tennant always being really, really annoyed when he heard Blue Monday, because they just thought they'd done it for the first time. They'd got oh. it in the studio. They'd got that sound in the studio. And they thought, wow, this is it. And then they heard Blue Monday yeah, and they thought, yeah. oh, fuck. Yeah, exactly. So, so, yeah, I was listening to all this electronic stuff and some of it would be Italo disco and some of it would be New Waves, yeah. you know, and some of it would be a bit more, you know, a bit more, a bit more punky, I guess. Like, uh, things like Alien Sex Fiend, you know, yeah. that yeah. a remix of that. Really kind yeah. of electronic, really kind of electro. Um, and at the same time, all the... Electro stuff was coming out like Africa Bambata, yes. and, you know. Um, so it was all, it was just this total melding mix up. It was completely like, who cares what the label is? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I tended to follow the dancing stuff. Yeah. And, and then what was the part of the process that, that, that crossed you over into becoming a participant, if you like? You know, stop just being a fan, a club goer, yeah. but becoming a participant. Because you, you, you become a DJ, for instance. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I just figured I couldn't do anything else. I didn't right. know what else to do. And I was hanging out at the mug club. I managed to get myself a job playing on, on the second floor where it didn't matter so much. <laughs> um, and my, my DJ career started from there. Thank God. That was just because I had a, a great record collection and couldn't do anything else. <laughs> yeah. And did you have any thoughts of becoming a musician? No. Yeah. No, it was just unthinkable. I'm, you know, I, I just thought, I'm not very musical. But you were, do, you were using music to express yourself in it. I mean, yes. The idea that now the, the DJ telling stories, you know, using a combination yeah. of their taste in music to reflect their individuality and turn people onto music. Yeah. This is a musical act, isn't it? It's exactly. When I say I'm not very musical, I mean, I can't play yeah. the piano or the guitar very well. Um, but at the same time, having been through punk, you know, you, you learnt that that didn't mm. matter. Why should that stop you? So, yeah, I thought, once I started hearing all the hip-hop stuff, which was basically looping breaks and stuff mm. like that, I thought, I can do this. Yes. But how can I do it so it's not copying them? How can I do it so it's just something that's mine? And I thought, well, no one's done it with disco. They've just done it with funk and soul. And, 
you know, they haven't actually revved up the tempo and done it with disco and used a bit more of that punk sensibilities, you know. So that's how I, I had the idea of the first record I did with S Express. So tell me more about that, because that's really intriguing, that, because it's a form of archaeology, isn't it? It's a form yeah. of... It's, it's almost a form of analysis in a way. It's a structural analysis of something, the way that uh, certainly that piece of music was put together. Uh -huh. Completely, you know, now it's, it's, it's almost mundane in the way it was put together. But at the time, yeah. that, was, that was an extraordinary sort of bolting things together in yeah. a, from, from your own musical history, yeah. if you like. I mean, basically, I, I was mainly inspired by uh, Double D and Steinsky, who did Lessons 1 to 3 in hip-hop, where they just did edits of yeah. uh, different pieces of music. Um, which were mainly the, the pieces of music that were used as breaks in, in the hip-hop records that were coming out. So yeah, that inspired me the most, I think. And then um, I just thought, okay, let's make a disco record and let's make it kind of like a futuristic disco record, but it still has to sound retro at the same time or it wouldn't yeah. be disco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, make it the, a kind of... Uh, almost like a parody of what a disco record should be. So that's mm. why you had the, the inane kind of uh, repeating lyrics, which meant nothing, but at the same time on the dance floor, when you're under the influence, meant everything. So, <laughs> so, the, so. it was a sort of, again, a, a kind of idea of, of uh, interpreting what the themes are of disco and playing around yeah. with them in a way. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so what had you decided was were the important elements of, of a disco record? Because even though it was, what, it was 89, wasn't it? But it's 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. 20, well, it's 20, it's 20 but years ago. It's made in 87. It's fascinating because <laughs> it's 20 years ago, but somehow when you did it, disco somehow seemed further away than yeah. it does now in a weird way. So it was like, whoa, yes. what, what? It was further away. Yeah. It was still a, a totally dirty word. The only people who were singing the praises of disco were the Pet Shop Boys. And they were coming from that kind of post disco angle of disco yeah. rather than the 70s. Angle. Yeah. They were coming from the, the high energy boys' town kind of angle where it was, more, it was more electronic and it was less the disco that we know from the 70s. Um, and I actually felt embarrassed when my record knocked them off the one, number one spot with their disco song, uh, My Heart Keeps Skipping the Beat, which I thought was a fantastic high energy disco track. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But it was weird because that was in there. Then my one came along and yeah, disco was a dirty word, yet these two records were both number one. And um, I remember thinking, oh my God, when we released this, people are going to slaughter me for putting this out. They're going to be like, what has he done? Yeah. And I remember the reviews coming out and it kind of gave them, gave the theme from S Express good reviews, but they weren't quite sure if they, it was okay to say this is brilliant, this mm. is fantastic. So they just said, yeah, this is quite good, but no, 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 no. It wasn't, I don't think it was single of the week in any, anything. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I think at the end of year charts, it was sort of at the bottom, number 13. <laughs> <laughs> People weren't sure because no. I was still listening to hip hop and yes. rare groove or whatever. And, and, um, and I guess disco had got that sort of reputation really uh, of the tackiness of the, no you know, we thought of disco as a, almost a novelty thing by then. And of course, there is an element of S Express because you are referring to that that, that, that is encoded in it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, you were flirting with that notion that there is something. There's a kind of idiocy in there, yeah, in a way, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I'd say even more now, we've remixed what disco actually is or means to us. We've taken all those things about, um, you know, oh, the, uh, the underground clubs like Paradise Garage. We've taken all the things about Studio 54. and We've taken all the best bits and left out the crap bits. And that's what we've got now in this kind of, uh, you know, reinvigorating of, of disco. Mm. And... It, it, if you look at what was really going on in the early 70s, the majority of it must have just been really crappy, yuppie disco clubs, you know, except for the, the cool underground yeah. ones. Crappy disco yuppie places. And in England, sort of mecca, yeah. mecca yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. it was naff. It was so like, we sort of uh, we, we, we reimagined what it was yeah, like in a way. Yeah, exactly. So I, I took all the glamour bits yeah. and I took all the... Uh, the underground uh, bits from the, the Paradise Garage and stuff and merged them together and had this parody of a disco record. And tell me yeah. what you chose and why you chose it, you know, the, the, the samples that you used. The samples? Um, well, Rose Royce, mm. is it Love That You Love? Just because it's an amazing break. And what did you think you were doing when you did that? I mean, what again, you? sampling has become sort of part of the yeah. language. It was m relatively early. I mean, it maybe was not still a few early, years, but it was yeah. relatively early to take that kind of thing that you were basically taking another piece of music completely. Yeah. So what did you what did you what, what were you doing by, by I, I doing just, that? I just felt like we 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 were pirates and we were plundering the past. So 
that's it. And anything was up for grabs, and it didn't matter. And luckily in those days, you could clear things a lot more easily. And I remember putting in a bit of Donna Summer, uh, a thing she did with Giorgio Moroder called um, Our Love, in the, in the break. And I played it on a cassette at Heaven. And because Donna Summer was going through that whole um, thing where uh, allegedly she said gay people deserve to die, or to get AIDS, because it's God's will, allegedly. Yeah, yeah. Um, when the Donna Summer bit came up at Heaven, uh, one person booed. So I took it out. <laughs> I took the Donna Summer bit out. Thank God, because she's notorious for like oh, really, causing yeah. hell for samples. Yeah. And what else did you use? You use other bits, didn't um, you? Yeah, there's quite a few bits. Um, I, I, I don't know if I should... <laughs> it's still in that well grey area. It's still in that grey <laughs> area where... Well, I don't, I don't even know if I should say... I, I mean, I, most people know anyway. Yeah. You can look it up online. I think you should still say it, though. Yeah. Okay, there's yeah. Debbie Harry. Just because she's, again, diva, you know. Um, and that was actually from a high-energy record of hers. So yeah. that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> there's, um, um, there's, yeah, a girl called... Uh, I've forgotten her name. Tiziana Smith. And she sang on Jamaica Funk. Uh, there's a vocal from her, uh, which was great. And it was just a, a record she put out, which, which I didn't think was particularly good. Mm -hmm. But I just liked that one little bit of vocal, which I looped, and actually um, played in a different phrasing. And, yeah, kind of played around with it on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. And it became another thing. So was this, in a way, coming out of being a DJ? That Effectively, what you were doing, you were doing the same thing you would do as a DJ. You were putting together sequences of music. Yeah. Although on, on, on this occasion you were, you were aiming to come up with a, an original piece, but it was yeah. essentially sequencing, yeah? yeah? Yeah, a mixture of Lego and plasticine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and did you do the... with the aerosol? Yeah, plan? with the aerosol. I, I actually, I didn't believe it when I saw that in control. I thought, they're lying, they're making it up. Yeah, but. they need it from you. <laughs> yeah. And what did you think you'd got then when you'd, when you'd finished it? You know, what, what did you want to have? As a, as a piece of music? I wanted to have something that was huge and, and got to number one, but I thought that's not possible. So disco was pop? Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that's not possible. This is, disco's a dirty word. I'm going to be the playlist at the clubs I play at. It's going to be a cult record, and in 10 years' time, people will say, wow, what an amazing record. Why wasn't this number one? Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it kind of messed up my whole... And I thought, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'd put out all these cult records and then sell out, you know, five years later. Yeah, and be, yeah. You know, Messed it all up. <laughs> and, and, and now the, the idea of sampling a, a disco record, yeah. you know, ever since really, the whole world has just sort of been taken over yeah. to an extent. I mean, I, it is interesting that interest with electronic music because the more interesting music in the 90s tended to come from the extreme end of, of what was a kind of dance music to yeah. an extent, didn't it? Yeah. You, know, the, you know, the warp label, yes, you know, exactly. warp, and I mean, that whole idea of, of where you were, listening, you were hearing sonically more exotic and exciting mm. sounds that was coming out of the dance world. Mm. And, and very slowly, rock became more and more sort of itself a dirty word in a way, yeah. Britpop, and, and, yeah. and disco started, I guess, its, mm. its long haul back to a kind exactly. of favour. Yeah. I mean, what, what is your reading of, of what's happened to the word disco and the idea of disco in the last few years? Well, di disco's uh, now come back to mean what it actually meant when it first started. Which is? Know, which is... Um, we're talking about black music. We're talking about, uh, I mean, gay, but not specifically, not, not that you have to be gay, but uh, gay roots of, uh, within the music. We're talking about um, soulful uplifting. We're talking about the original uh, kind of four on the floor. But, but I think after a lot, having the last 10 years or, or more of, of uh, kind of techno, hard techno and kind of moody and deep and you know, people want a bit of joy again on, mm -hmm. on the underground scene. And mm -hmm. this is where it's all stemming from. It's all stemming from Hoxton, this disco revival, and from people like the LCD sound system. Right. You know, when, when um, he goes out and DJs and stuff yeah. like that. So suddenly it's become very trendy on the underground. And disco's come back into all the clubs in Hoxton, and now it's taken over again. Mainstream people are writing about it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what are, what are they responding to? Are they responding to the idea that wouldn't it be great if, because there's a recession, disco came back? Yeah. Or are they actually responding to something that's really happening? Because I can never tell it these happening. days. It yeah. is really happening. Yeah. It is really happening in, in, in places, you know, you go to most places in, in Boombox, it's almost comical how everyone's suddenly mm. ditched 
uh, all the electro and the electronic stuff they were playing and playing this disc. I mean, it actually started with everyone playing Italo disco, so mm -hmm. it was still ele electronic. Yeah, and it kind of got more and more disco, pure disco, live instruments, you know, orchestras. It returned Stuff to that like very that. original stage where it was it was yeah. recorded by great musicians. Yeah, and the producers exactly. were in their element. Exactly. Yeah. So all that is is coming back, and now um, it's interesting to see what will happen with the musicians because people can't afford orchestras. You know, mm -hmm. they can't afford all these live live players and bongo players and tablets. But maybe maybe uh, someone like Madonna could. I don't know. Maybe she yeah. could do a pure disco album. Yeah. Uh, maybe RCD Sound System could do that, but. Um, I think the stuff that is coming out, like LCD, is great electronic disco. It's fantastic, you know. Yeah. And what, what about the idea that, uh, that because of that great sound that those early disco pioneers got making their records, you know, using great musicians, using the strings, using the horns, that it's endless, endlessly fertile to sample, to basically find the most obscure... I mean, I've noticed the, the, the disco fanatics at the moment, they are the most nerdiest... Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, looking for the obscure place, yeah. looking in a way for almost looking in the middle of kits to find something that that it is itself a wonderful sound that they can use and demonstrate yeah, their extraordinary yeah. knowledge of the history, etc., etc. Yeah. But it all seems to be this quest to find, you know, some kind of holy gra grail of of the disco sound. That's what it feels like at the moment because um, yeah, everyone's looking for this obscure stuff and they're playing like weird Turkish disco and yeah, <laughs> things yeah. like that. Um, it, it, and Bill Brewster was saying it has turned into that northern soul thing now, which it never was before. But yeah, it's become that. People finding the most obscure disco thing they can find. And what's your reading of why that is? <sighs> Nerds. <laughs> you think so, yeah. Just Nerds, yeah. And the, and the DJ, in a way, is an example of... I mean, I've, I've, I've sort of recalibrated my idea of the disc jockey now as being not that far removed from, from what I do as a rock writer, which is you're basically... Demonstra locating, demonstrating your taste, trying to sort of yeah. prove that you've got better, different yeah, taste than yeah. others. But this is much more active. You're doing it. You're yeah. playing it to people. You're telling them uh, and showing them more directly uh, your, your love of a certain kind of music. I mean, thank God for the nerds because, you know, some great music has, has suddenly been uncovered that I didn't know existed, you mm. know. And um, it's fantastic. But I think it, it, the problem with that thing is it does get into trying to get more and more obscure. Suddenly you're mm. playing something because it's obscure rather than because it's fantastic. Yeah. And what about the idea that the original like, disco idea, and I think the same thing happened with punk, and it happened in that post-punk period in the early 80s in this country with the, the sort of melting pot thing, the inclusive element of what the clubs were like, and there was a kind mm. of sense of anything goes. Is there, is there more now a, a scientific element to, to the way that club going is? Sometimes I get the feeling it's been much more commercialised. And oh, it has, yeah. I mean, in the early days of Acid House, that's what it was all about, inclusiv inclusivity and mm. bonding and empathy, and obviously it's all about the ecstasy. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, as, as the years have gone by, um, there's always going to be a backlash to that, mm. you know, and people think they're better than that. So we're taking cocaine now, we're going to be exclusive and stuff like that. And um, I'm, tr I'm trying to see if, if uh, the, the clubs now in Hoxton, if the playing of disco is bringing a, a more yeah. inclusive vibe, a more loving vibe, a mm. more, you know, a more unity. Um, it's hard to tell. Do you think it, it is a, a genuine nostalgia for that as much as for the, for the sounds? Do you think it is a... A, an attempt to recapture some I of think so. I think the, the people who love disco want that as well. They want the whole package. And, um, you know, but I, I do think that a lot of people, uh, a lot of young kids go along, and I do feel they're dancing the disco because they read it's the thing to dance to this year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure if they're, if, if they're actually feeling the music and becoming more united and uh, euphoric and. Or not? I don't. I, I still need to study that. And what about the idea of, of what you, you know, the way you listen to music, the late seventies and early eighties, mm. and now twenty five years later, there you are and everything. Is the, is is the part of this a kind of nostalgia for for the vinyl era? You know, when 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 pop music and what it represented. You know, it was it was a lot more innocent, but in a way, yeah. there was this you know, incredible moment when the sound of a record, you know, reached its zenith, if you like. You know, and mm. the experimenters were getting new equipment. There was all sorts of cultural kind of moments happening, and and, and everything sort of peaked together at the same time. Uh, and these records, you know, that, that had a certain reputation at the time, now everything's stripped away. 
there's just a, a real sense of joy about them, if you like. You know, it, 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 and they came about in a way because they were made for records, and then they were made for these new yeah. things, the 12-inch record, and, yeah. and the sound you could get on a 12-inch yeah. record if you cut yeah. it, you know, just one song. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Do you think there's a sort of nostalgia for that at the time when you know there's a you know obviously the MP3 world and and the iTunes world, you know, that, that's, yeah. that's all disappearing. All those structures are disappearing. Exactly. Yeah, I think because a lot of this disco um, re revival <laughs> is is uh, kind of being run by people who are a bit older. Uh, well, it has been started by people who are a bit yeah. older. Yeah. I think that's definitely the case. It is a love of the of vinyl and uh, the fact that MP3 sound crap. They, they really do. And, and CDs sound crap compared to vinyl. And... We've all been conned into switching to CDs, and now people are playing MP3s. It's like no one cares about the quality. Mm. I find it really distressing. Yeah, because yeah. it, it does seem to be that that, that yearning for for, yeah. for, for you know that you know the, the the whole idea of the remix got more and more sophisticated, more and more complicated, and it became the thing that ultimately replaced almost the original track with 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 something else. And once upon a time, a remix was also sort of almost so simple, wasn't it? At first, yeah. it was just an edit almost, and then it was just you know playing around with the original multi track. Yeah. It wasn't replacing everything. Uh -huh, yeah. is, there, is there a sense that the, the, there's a fascination with that particular period rather than the complete reproduction of a, of a track? Well, there's definitely, a, um, if you go to um, you know, Fonica and places like that, you, every week there's hundreds of re edits of disco stuff. Hundreds of that. So that's become a new, mm. uh, well, it's not even new, but it's been going on for, since back then. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's a lot of that, and uh, they've chucked out the crap bits, you know. Yeah, yeah. Which are often the good bits. Yeah, you yeah. Know, but they're probably a bit too camp for straight, you know, for, for the, uh, I don't know, for the serious straight disco fan. They're mm. probably a bit too too much. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that is going on a lot. Um, mm. But I, I, yeah, I think still when people are doing, uh, remixes now they do think you have to change the whole thing that mm. hasn't changed mm. yeah. and what, what was your feeling now that you're you're so associated as a as a, a figure a disc jockey and a musician with with the word disco <laughs> having come from an era when disco was a dirty word, you dirty know, what, word. What, what, what do you think of it now that in a way when we think of mark Moore and essex best we think uh, we think of disco <laughs> I'm, I'm proud of it I'm, I'm happy because to me again like like i say uh i was too young to go to those real discos but uh, the discos that I did go to were incredible. The, the kind of gay clubs, the um, uh, and then you go to the kind of straight clubs like the Embassy mm. in, in the mm. early eighties, and yes. they were pretty glamorous. Yeah. Even though it was like uh, probably the music was pretty crap there, but they were they did have a lot of glamour. But the glamour and, seemed to be important, didn't it? I yeah. guess that's where it metastasizes when it all goes horribly wrong, and you get Dolly Parton disco records. Cause oh yeah. But, but the glamour, it seemed to be the thing, didn't it? That there yeah. seemed to be a kind of defiance of the themes of it, show business. People from, from, from dingy areas wanted to break out into a, into a glamorous world. Yeah, yeah. And it's because you're in times of recession. Yeah. And each time it's been in times of recession, I think. You know, that when disco first appeared and when the acid house appeared. What's interesting is that the roots of disco often seem um, militant. There seems to be a reaction against something that's oh, pinning people down. Do you know what I mean? If uh -huh. you go way back to the early seventies, the disco started to formulate, and the mm. clubs that were formed, it seemed to be actually almost have an avant-garde sensibility, didn't it? Rather than the, the, than anything kitschy or just about the, yeah. the dressing up, it was yeah. it was about basically you know finding y y y your place and, and, yes, and, and, yeah. and celebrating it, celebrating it, survival, you know, getting through the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know, I don't know about now. I, I think people do need that. Um, mm. More than ever, and, and we on the dance floors it has got so poxy serious, which is great. I like a bit of serious now and again. What do you mean by poxy serious? Well, then? just long, uh, progressive house records yeah. that just have a drum beat, and the hi hat comes in two minutes later, and everyone screams because it's okay. a change, and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I find it completely boring. Even yeah. if I am on drugs, I find it boring. People <laughs> go, "Oh, you need to take drugs." I'm like, it's still boring. Because I've I've listened to that for fifteen years now. It's like enough. Mm. <laughs> but you know, um, luckily people are experimenting again. And you know, I, I'd say the last six years they're they're, they're mixing it up again. Mm. You know, and so it's not just one thing. And yeah. you are getting rock things thrown in which are mm. danceable, and you are getting this thrown in. And and to me, the best discos did that. Yeah. And the Z label was a perfect example. Going back to them again. Yes. You know, they had everything. They had humour, glamour. Mm. They had punk rock, new wave mixed with disco. They had 
you know. Um, but I think that the main thing was a sense of humour, because I think yes. humour has been missing for so long from yes. music. Yes. In fact, I remember, was it you when I did Theme from S Express and we did our first interview and you said, is this a joke? <laughs> was that you? Oh, God, don't. <laughs> I can't probably. <laughs> but I probably meant it in a kind way. Okay. <laughs> And I remember reading it, uh, and he went, Mark looks surprised when I asked him. He looks a bit upset, <laughs> as if I should know. <laughs> I think what I was struggling yeah. towards is something I think I can clarify more easily now. Yeah. Is there's something interesting about disco, that there is a sense of humour that is really important. And when it got yeah. commercialised, I think that's what made it yes. turn it into kitsch. If exactly, you like. yeah. yeah. And it was awful. Yeah. It did become like, no more of this, because yeah. the wrong people were jumping on board making disco yes. records. Yeah. And I think that's what made disco suck mainly, the fact yeah. that it was so everywhere and people couldn't handle it anymore. Mm. And it was the crack stuff they were listening to. Yes. And they, they didn't know there was all this amazing stuff. Yes. You know? uh, and so what do you think of now when you think of the word disco? I guess now, I, I still think of 70s disco, glamour. When I say glamour, I'm talking about in the music, mm. where you listen to the music and suddenly you're transported to a glamorous place. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and, I, and I do think of, I do think of humour because I'm, you know, I suppose I'm thinking of, again, things like uh, Christina, I'm a disco yeah, clone. Yeah, no, or, absolutely. Uh, so I suppose it's all down to uh, how, how we find your sense of humour is, whether it's going to be Christina or whether it's going to be the village people. And how funny is that, the village people? How funny that no one knew they were gay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's incredible. And we were just living in mad times back then. Mm. People, people didn't know Boy George was gay in America. Didn't know Freddie Mercury was gay for about yeah. 15 years. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> so you think disco now, is, it's, it's got a more positive sense about, about what, what the word means? Yeah, yeah. For, my, for myself, I think it's definitely a positive sense. And it's definitely about, about fun. And it's about joy. Mm. And, uh, and yeah, if you go into it, it's, it's about deeper. It's about unity and spirituality. And mm. If you go, you know... I sometimes wonder story. whether that was why it got such a bad reputation with, from, from certainly the, the kind of people that tended to write about music, if you think about it, white rock critics. For them it was frivolous and it yeah. was escapist uh -huh. and, it, and it seemed tongue-in-cheek mm. and it broke all the rules that had been established from, from the white yeah. rock world, if you yeah. like. You know. but, but, but actually within it there was, there was actually some, a, a, a tremendous amount of experimentation and mm. radicalism and, and, and a sense of inclusiveness. To tell the truth, most disco had more substance than dance music for the last 10 years or so. Mm. You know, because mm. that is just the same old... And it hasn't even got a vocal nowadays mm. <laughs> on most of those progressive things or those tribal things. Mm. Or well, if it does have a vocal, it's pretty... It, it hasn't... You know, a lot of disco had a political message. You mm. listen to Machine, the, um, the, you know, but for the grace of God, go I. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, it depended on the artist, really. But, yeah, there were... There were it wasn't just frivolous, all yeah. of it. Mm. But, yeah, the, the main function of disco was to forget about your worries and your cares and uh, to forget about the outside, outside world for that night. Mm -hmm. And, and you don't see nece anything necessarily wrong with that? No, right? not yeah. at all. Yeah. But um, um, as long as you still get the records like Machine thrown in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you got a favourite disco record of all time? Uh, yeah, Tantra, The Hills of Kathmandu, which is probably a bit more high energy. Okay. Patrick Cowley remix it goes on for about 13 minutes. Yeah. And it's kind of like techno... Techno Giorgio Miranda. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. really ahead of its time, and it's uh, again the lyrics are "Let me take you to the hills of Kathmandu." Nothing political. <laughs> nothing, <laughs> nothing. But was this a metaphor for? <laughs> it's just more damn bliss, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, more bliss, <laughs> exactly. And uh, you did get taken there, so <laughs> it worked. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I, th I think people say, yeah, you had to listen to disco. You didn't have to listen to disco on drugs. I think that's the beauty of disco. And I think the beauty of any good dance record is you don't really need drugs to appreciate it. I'd say uh, for the you know for some of the minimal stuff uh, or or some of the techno stuff, people say you need drugs for that. Perhaps you do more so than disco. Mm -hmm. I think with disco, you, you just need to have an open mind and dress up a bit. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> nice one, Paul. Thank you, Mark. Ryan. Thank you. <laughs>